Hey everyone, it's Maggie Bot here to do a video about oddball aeronauts. So, um, I have my, my decks here, and I was going to do just a little bit more in depth, a uh, little bit of rules, and maybe some strategy as I go through on my thoughts, and it'll just be 10 minutes, 10 minutes, yeah. Um, <laughs> so this is a two player card game. It is played without a surface, so you can play it actually in hand. Um, so lines, waiting for tables, waiting rooms, conventions, those types of things. It's going to be perfect for that. I can't wait until it's everywhere in the United States because it is from England and or the UK, and they are doing okay over there, and they're just starting to see a little bit of a foothold here. So. We wish them all the luck in the world, and I'm so excited about their next Kickstarter, and it's adding in multiplayer rules, so I'm thrilled, and I wanted to tell you guys a little bit more about it. So, the game is played a little bit asymmetrically, so you, right now there are pirates and pin dragons. So this is my pin dragon deck, and before you start the game, you shuffle in one mercenary, and a selection of two random events. So you just shove those into the deck and shuffle up. So when they created the game, they also included a couple extra cards that you could swap out from the base deck. So you have kind of, um, if it says pirate crew on it, you would have pirate crew cards that you could replace them with. And honestly, I haven't needed to do that yet because the decks are really well balanced. I have not noticed one winning more than the other. Um, it's just a matter of the only blowouts I've ever really had or if people have crushed me in a game, it's always felt more by luck than anything else. Um, most games are rather close. Uh, a good winning score, so the way you score the game, is that if you run out of cards, if you can't play a card, you lose the game. And the score is based on the number of cards the winner had left in their deck when they won. So usually that's three to four, I'd say. Three to seven is kind of your average. And a blowout, I'd say, is 11 to 13. So that's a significant chunk of the deck, too. That's like a third of the deck. So when you're done shuffling, you flip the last three cards of your deck over. Uh, this starts your discard pile. And now there's no hidden information, it's not draw game, so you can see the entire deck, where all the events are, where that big smashy mercenary is, you know, which turns are going to come up. And what you're going to be trying to do is using the abilities on the cards and the three different damage types to outlast your opponent. So the three different damage types are here on the left. Yes on the left of the card, on the right where I am. Um, so you have sailing, sailing, guns, and boarding. Sailing is a, uh, it's not an aggressive ability, it's a passive ability. It allows you to recover two cards. So that means taking cards from the, the back of your discard and flipping them back into the deck. So sailing, if you win with that, oh, oh that one, you get to recover cards. Guns is an aggressive move, so if you win with a guns action, you're going to force the other opponent to discard two cards. And boarding is kind of both. You get to recover one card and make your opponent discard one card. So each card has those three stats. They also sometimes have abilities here. Um, the abilities are called tricks. You get to use one trick per turn, and most of the tricks are also labeled with when you can use them. Uh, then you'll see that each card has the big number and a little number. So the card on the top of your deck, the big numbers count because that is your top card. And then the little numbers from your second or third cards can optionally be used to enhance the number on the first card. So if this is a four, I could use the little two here to make this into a six by using two cards in my play. Now, how that actually looks is a player will, usually the winner of the last round will have to declare first. So let's say I'm using sailing. And my opponent then hears that I'm using sailing. They say, I'm using boarding. 
So I know that I'm using my ceiling stat against their boarding stat. And the same time, we're going to go one, two, three, and hold up a number of fingers from one to three of how many cards we're including in our stat that round. So if you're only using the first one, you use the big number from the top card. If you're using two cards, you can use the first and second, the first and third. And if you're using all three cards, you're using all three cards. However, when you use cards, that is kind of a wager, because however many cards you use, you're going to have to discard. And that doesn't include the guns effects or whatever. So when you you wager the three cards, and then if they win with guns, you discard two more. So you've spent five cards. That's a lot of the deck. That's like a sixth of the deck in one move. So three is a huge investment. One is usually a little too wimpy, unless it's a really good one. And the tricks can help you kind of change things up and tactically get through uh, that one extra point or whatever you needed. So once we both say how many cards we're using, so one, two, three, go, boom, we would compare stats. So let's say I use two cards for sailing, and that's a four and a two, I have a six. They had a seven. So I would discard the cards I used, and because they were using boarding, I would have to discard an additional card, and they would get to recover a card. They still need to discard the cards they won with. So if they won with three cards, they're, they're out of luck. What's nice, though, is that knowing what kind of damage they're going to deal, so if they're using sailing, I know that they're not going to affect my discards. I'm going to try and leave my best cards on the top of my deck or be okay with the options of what I could have left on my deck if they won or lost. Uh, it's a lot of thinking. It's a little more intuitive than I'm making it sound, but it's really neat because you you have access to this entire deck and you kind of look through and you see when your big events or whammies are happening and you get to make some fun decisions. And it feels really good to pull off like two or three turns in a row of doing something on purpose. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. I might be biased, but I always feel really good if I do something on purpose in a game. Uh, so, once you get through that, there's one more rule, and that is magic. So, a magic effect is kind of colored, and you can't see it because I'm using this lazy webcam instead of a real camera, but it is uh, usually an enhancement of your stats, so this guy gets even chunkier, um, and the only way for your opponent to counter that is if they have, I'll show you the difference, if their top card has a black shadow dragon instead of this white dragon. And so both decks have this. Um, you just have to say, I'd like to use magic. And they say, you can't. And they can like, show you the, the dragon or whatever. Uh, so some interesting choices. And the last thing I'll leave you guys with, um, hopefully you can hear that I really enjoyed the game. I'm trying to just shove my review in with the rules, but maybe I'm not doing a very good job. Um, but I should show you some of the artwork because this is just adorable stuff. Uh, so you can see there's just this um, whimsical kind of raccoons and animals as people and they're just so damn cute. Um, I know that part of the next set will be mechanonauts, so those are going to be kind of robot people. That's not really my style, but I, I think the, the pen dragons are about as close to my aesthetic appeal that I could want, so I already have a deck. <laughs> I will be really happy if um, this continues to grow and continues to get bigger. And the last thing I'll leave you with is that if you'd like to play Oddball Aeronauts, I am available for online games. Uh, we usually go over Google Chat or Google Hangout, and so you can actually play really well over webcam. So each player has their deck and you play here and then you can switch decks and play with the other one. Um, so on my Twitter and Maverick Muse's Twitter, they've been doing hangouts every Sunday at 11 a.m. I did not make it to the last two because I was terribly, terribly sick and today just didn't work that way. But um, I would highly encourage you to look out to them. Go say hi to Nigel and try the game out. Even if you have to print and play it for a little while until you get a set, um, I would highly recommend it. But check it out. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.